A girl lived peacefully next to her father, a renowned pharmacist, but her life changed completely after being kidnapped and sold as a servant in the emperor's palace, and guys, thank you very much, we reached almost 20,000 subscribers and I'm very happy, you are awesome, and we are not going to stop, we are going with everything towards 20,000 subscribers. So put your finger on the like button below and click on subscribe, so without further ado, let's get to the video. Mao Mao's father catches her attention, and asks her to deliver some medicine to the Verdigris house, but asks the girl to be careful, as they have been kidnapping women out there lately. And Mao Mao says that he will be fine, as he will only stop by to get herbs when he is returning, well, the girl heads to the greenhouse, and then three men start watching her, and when testing the medicine, she notices that she is taking a long time to cure, and decides to change the recipe. Then Perrin appears there and notices that the girl is hurt, and Mao Mao explains that this is part of her experiments with medicine that she always does, and Perrin asks if she has been eating properly. And well, the lady from the Verdigris house goes to Mao Mao, and asks her not to start letting out explosions again with her experiments, and then, the lady offers Mao Mao a career as a love professional, in which case the girl just leaves the medicines there and runs away. And on the way she calls the lady a weirdo, because she is always trying to make her become a whore. Well, she goes to collect the herbs, but ends up being kidnapped by the men from before, and in this she disdains the situation, saying that her father I would be very worried. And meanwhile, Lady Lihua was giving birth to the prince, and after three months of what happened, Mao Mao was working in the palace, and she wonders if she was really sold or if they didn't pay for her ransom, after all, it's been three months since the kidnapping. And Mao Mao murmurs, saying that the palace is almost the same thing as brothels, and for her, the best thing would be not to get involved with the inner palace, but the girl already finds herself without options, and regrets it, as she was living a very good life as an apothecary until then. And well, she explains that the inner palace is a garden for women who are responsible for giving birth to the emperor's children, and the entry of men there is strictly prohibited, only the emperor, his family, and eunuchs, which are men who have lost important parts of their bodies. And the inner palace has a huge number of 2,000 concubines and servants, as well as a thousand eunuchs, and Mao Mao explains that unlike concubines of any level, female servants like her are disposable, and can lose their lives at any moment. Well, one of the servants goes to her and asks which room that sign is telling her to go to, and she replies that it is Wisteria, 9, to which Mao Mao says that most of the servants don't know how to read, and says that there, they are taught the essential rules of etiquette and that's it. And she says that even if they received a raise for knowing how to read and write, that money would also be stolen by the kidnappers, so it wouldn't make any difference. Well, that being said, Mao Mao explains that even mere servants like them could become low-level concubines, it would only depend on appearance and her breasts, but considering Mao Mao's skeletal appearance, she comes to her senses and notes that she has no chance at all. Furthermore, the more she stands out, the more her life is at risk, and so, Mao Mao decides to remain in the shadows, as she just needs to try a little harder and in two years she will be able to get out of there, well, the servant from before goes to her, and comments about having seen a very handsome eunuch in the central area. And the scene cuts to that eunuch, and he was in Lady Li Hua's delivery room, and Xiaoling's mother shows concern about her son's health, but she is informed that the doctor is busy attending to the prince. The next day, Mao Mao talks to her friend about the prince and Princess Lingli, in which the girl talks about such a curse, and wonders if the family is suffering from it. But Mao Mao wasn't aware of any of this, and her friend comments that the inner palace doesn't stop talking this rumor, in this case, would be the rumor that all the heirs who were born there were dying. And she explains that all three of the emperor's sons that have been born so far have become weak and ended up dying, and apparently this is happening again with the other son, and the girl says that the doctor went to visit Lady Gyokuyu and Lady Lihua, and as the emperor does not have an empress consort, Lady Lihua would probably take that place, since she was the one who gave birth to the prince. And Mao Mao says that this would be the obvious thing to do, as Lady Lihua must certainly be considered the most important woman for the emperor, but her friend says that there are rumors that talk about the emperor preferring Lady Gyokuyu more, and people they say this may be the cause of the curse. And the girl gives a guess about the situation, and says that Lady Lihua is possibly much worse, 
as the doctor is always with her and her son. So Mao Mao questions whether she is also sick, and her friend explains that she and her son has headaches and stomach aches, as well as nausea. And that's enough for the girl to think it's a curse, but Mao Mao says that believing that is very innocent, and so she analyzes the information, and believes that the family could have been poisoned, but she thinks that if the if anyone wanted to take the position of imperial heir, it wouldn't make sense to target the princess. So the theory that she was deliberately poisoned is the least likely, in which case Mao Mao starts to believe that it is a simple hereditary disease, and well, she stops and wonders why she is taking a rumor so seriously, but even though she tries to leave it to there, the girl becomes curious and decides to go and take a look at what is happening. But when she gets there, she sees the ladies fighting, and Li Hua accuses Gyokuyu of having placed a curse on her son, because he was jealous of her having given birth to a boy, but Gyokuyu says that it doesn't make sense for her to think like that, after all her Xiaoling's daughter is also sick, as is the prince. Well, a man calls Jinshu to talk, and the two continue arguing, and Gyokuyu says that he would also like his daughter to be examined by the doctor, and when looking at the doctor, Mao Mao feels that he is nothing more than an idiot charlatan, after all he he's been with his concubines for a long time and hasn't noticed anything. Then she goes back to analyzing the symptoms of the ladies and their children, and then goes to them to report what the real problem would be, and on the way she passes Jinshu, saying that she would need to write the origin of the problem on something, and he hears everything is strange, those words. Well, at nightfall, the prince dies in his mother's arms, and after a month of his death, everyone already knew, and Jinshu goes to Gyokuyu, and she explains that the day she visited the Crystal Palace to ask that when the doctor analyzed her daughter, she found that piece of cloth tied to a stick, and on the cloth it said that the white face powder is poison, so she shouldn't let her baby touch it, but upon hearing this, Jinshu finds it strange that the doctor took all those steps to not say something so simple, and Gyokuyu says that he possibly didn't know how to treat the prince. At this Jinshu wonders who would have sent the message on the cloth, and the lady says that she would like him to find out about it, and then he remembers that that day Mao Mao commented about needing to write on something, and that makes her his main suspect. Well, Mao Mao is talking to her friend, until she is called to go to the servant's matron immediately, and when she gets there she already imagines that she is in trouble, after all, servants being called by high-ranking officers cannot be a good thing. And well, Jinshu appears and leaves all the girls drooling, but Mao Mao initially thinks he would be an arrogant-looking woman, and then he goes to them and introduces himself as the manager of the inner palace, in which she discovers that he is a man, and believes that her friend was probably talking about him when she said about the handsome eunuch. Well, he holds up a piece of paper for everyone, and it says that Mao Mao should stay in the room, and when she reads it, she is amazed, and says that she really knows how to read, unlike the other servants, so he tells them all to go back to their rooms, and Mao Mao understands that Jinshu wrote on paper precisely to separate her from the other servants. But still, she decides to try to get in the way, but he calls her back and asks her to follow him, and on the way he comments that in her records it was as if the girl didn't know how to read, and Mao Mao tries to control the situation again, saying that it must be a mistake, because pretending to be ignorant is the best choice she could make at that moment, and well, she wonders how he would have discovered the messages she left, after all the girl had made sure that no one would be watching her. And arriving at the place, he takes her to Lady Gyokuyu's room, and the girl thanks her for Mao Mao's help with her message, and she feels relieved to discover that she would not be punished, and the lady thanks her for saving Mao Mao's life. Ling Li. However, she says that she is not worthy of such kindness, but Gyokuyu says that she can't thank her enough for what Mao Mao did for her, so the girl continues trying to give up and says that she got the wrong person. And Mao Mao thinks that he doesn't want to die for lying to someone important, but he also doesn't want to get too involved with them, well, Jinshu shows the cloth left by Mao Mao, and says that that fabric is only used in the servant's clothes, more specifically in the clothes of the girls who work at the laundry, which, by the way, is where Mao Mao works. And this leaves her much more trapped, and Jinshu asks her to explain why she had placed that flower on the window sill. well, she explains that she had discovered what was going wrong, and says that the cause was precisely the makeup powder. And Mao Mao explains that where she grew up, courtesans used sophisticated makeup powder, and most of them were poisoned by the powder and ended up losing their lives, and the girl explains that because she is an apothecary, 
she knows a few things about poisons. In this Gyokuyu says that the face powder on the table was used by the baby's nurse, and then she ended up getting sick and had to rest at home, and then the lady reflects that being ignorant is a mortal sin, and says that she should have paid more attention to the things that go into her baby's mouth. But Jinshu says that he is also to blame for this, because if he had realized earlier, he could have saved more lives, like that of the prince himself. But Gyokuyu says that he mentioned this to Lihua, but everything she said only made the lady more suspicious of her. Well, Mao Mao wonders if they'll need her yet, and Gyokuyu asks the girl to be her lady-in-waiting, and upon hearing this, she is in disbelief, but thinks that if she continues acting in the shadows, she will continue to lack prominence, even though she is in a higher position, well, in a village one of the men falls dead on the ground, after eating food poisoned by someone. After one of the men falls to the ground poisoned, one of the soldiers tries to look for culprits, and ends up getting excited, so his colleague asks him to treat the soldiers first, well, Jinshu stays on top of the situation, and Gao Shan says that the soldiers' food soldiers was made by the villagers. And the leader of this village would have been arrested for helping the barbarians, so Jinshu asks for time to think about what they should do, and the man comments that he heard about Jinshu having hired a new lady-in-waiting to serve Gyokuyu. And he says he did this because the lady only had four women to serve her, and that is little compared to Li Hua, who has more than ten servants, and this hurts her dignity as a high-ranking concubine, but she did not would hire any servant of unknown origin. Because being suspicious of others is something natural for an emperor's concubine, and well, Gao Shan questions who the new lady-in-waiting would be, Jenshu says that she is the most convenient servant possible, in this case, it would be that servant with freckles, and he explains that the girl has very valuable knowledge in medicine. And then the servant understands that she is really very useful, but wonders what will happen if she uses her knowledge in an evil way, and Jenshu says that it's just that they don't give her the chance to do that, and says that anything is just him use your beauty to seduce her. And meanwhile, Xiaolan talks to Mao Mao, and says she's jealous of her, after all the girl is going to serve a high-level concubine, but she doesn't seem so excited about it. Well, when she left outside, Jenshu was already waiting by Mao Mao, and she says that she will go to Jade's palace soon, and asks if he would like anything. Then he touches her face, and casts a charm, to prevent Mao Mao from doing anything wrong with Lady Gyokuyu, but she excuses herself and continues on her way feeling disgusted with the situation. And well, she arrives at the palace, and is greeted by a woman, who introduces herself as Hong Yang and leader of Gyokuyu's ladies-in-waiting, and then she asks Mao Mao to follow her, and she goes to the lady's room, in which she is received by the lady and her daughter. And after that, Mao Mao is introduced to all areas of the palace, then Hong Yang takes the girl to meet the lady's other servants, and the first of them introduces herself as Ying Hua, while the girl next door is called Guiyuan, and the girl on the right introduces herself as Ailin, and finally, Mao Mao also introduces herself to them, and says she is happy to work with them, but the girls notice a band on her arm, and are already suspicious of it. And well, Mao Mao walks over to them to start work too, but Ying Hua says that she could go rest in her room, as she has a special task to do later, so Hong Yang takes her to her room. And the servants comment on the band Mao Mao had on her arm, so Gui Yuan suggests that she is possibly hiding scars made by her abusive parents, and then be sold to the inner palace and start working as a courtesan. Well, she's left in her room, and she reflects on never having wanted to achieve anything very big, after all, a newcomer like her certainly wouldn't be well accepted there, but Mao Mao notices that those girls' eyes were full of empathy for her. Well, after that, Jin Shi takes her to test a dish, so the girl can find out if it has poison or not, and he explains that the food made for the concubines goes through many people before getting there, and that's why it's much easier to someone poisons the dish in the process. And he says that when Gyokuyu became pregnant, her food was poisoned at least twice a day, and this caused the poison tester's nerves to stop working, to the point that she could no longer move. Then Mao Mao understands why the other girls are being very nice to her, well, the girl receives the first bowl, and when she takes it, Mao Mao notices that there are no colors or suspicious smells in the food. And when she takes the first spoonful, she doesn't feel any numbness, and then she says that the dish is not poisoned. In this she remembers that a long time ago, 
she did several crazy experiments on her arm, and this ended up making the girl more poison tolerant. And so she feels lucky to have gotten that job. After all she was going to eat the dishes meant for high-level concubines, well, after testing the dishes, Mau Mau suggests that they start using silver dishes, as they react more to poisons. And in this Hongyang says that Genshur used ceramic plates on purpose, just with the intention of testing her knowledge, and the conclusion of the test was that Mau Mau's knowledge applies to both poisons and medicine. And the girl explains that she understands this subject because she worked as an apothecary, and Hongyang says that if the girl had made it clear that she was literate, she would have a higher salary, but the girl explains that part of her salary goes to her kidnappers, and this irritates her a lot, so the less she earns, the better. And then the servant drops an expensive vase on purpose, and laments, asking how Mao Mao would send money to her family now, when she destroyed an expensive item from the palace, an item that she would not be able to pay for even with her salary. Lady in waiting. At this point Mao Mao understands Hong Yang's sarcasm, and apologizes for having broken that jar, and asks her to take the money that would go to her family, to pay for that loss, and then Hong Yang says that she will arrange the paperwork to do so. But first she pays the girl, for her dangerous work of testing the food, and when she gets that kind of check Mao Mao is surprised, because she received the same amount of money as her normal salary. And since that check was delivered directly to her, the kidnappers won't be able to take any real of that money, and this makes her more motivated with her work, and well, the girl goes back to the palace, to help the other girls with the household chores. But all the servants tell Mao Mao to go and rest. And this makes her very bored, as she is only called to test the food twice a day, but the girl is called by Gyokuyu, and the lady says that Genshur needs her, so the heartthrob is already trying to turn on his charm. From Mao Mao, but he soon realizes that his seduction doesn't work very well on her. And well, the girl asks how she could serve him, and he puts food on the table sent by a military officer, and Genshur wants her to see if it contains poison or not, and upon smelling it, Mao Mao notices that there is an aphrodisiac in it. Bread, but says that it is not harmful to their health. But Genshur explains that it might not bite's a good idea to eat it, because the person who sent him the bread is not trustworthy at all, and this would make it impossible for him to eat in peace, so the girl deduces that the person who sent that food to him will visit him more afternoon. And this impresses Genshur, because the girl is able to perceive a lot of things just by smelling the food, and then Mao Mao finds his action strange, as he already knew that the food had an aphrodisiac, but still, Genshur tried to make her okay. Eat the bread. And well, he says he has one more question for her, but first he explains that a squad of soldiers was poisoned, after being assigned to a mission to attack the barbarians, the men reported feeling nausea, difficulty breathing and some other symptoms. And Genshur explains that the meal was eaten in a nearby village, and that same squad of soldiers had arrested the village leader after he helped the barbarians, but an officer calmed the situation and suspended the leader's punishment. At this Mao Mao understands that the natural thing would be to assume that it was the members of the village who had poisoned the soldiers, but she finds something strange about this story, and asks where the soldiers had eaten their meal, and Genshur responds that they were in a camp, so they should be outdoors. And then she questions whether the village members would have also given the plates and toothpicks to the soldiers, and Genshur says that they probably must have used their own cutlery, and he questions whether Mao Mao noticed anything strange. And she takes the flower from the room and says that it is called a rhododendron, and then the girl ingests it, and says that when eating it, symptoms such as nausea and difficulty breathing occur, and in this way she makes them aware that in the palace itself there are poisonous plants inside. And the rhododendron has poison in its leaves and flowers, but the poison can vary from place to place depending on the flower, and she explains that some wood can emanate poison just by being burned, in this genture understands that the soldiers possibly poison themselves, as they used wood from nearby trees as firewood, to heat the food. And Mao Mao says that they were lucky to have a wise officer around, because if it weren't for him, the entire village could have been lost, and well, after solving the whole mystery, the girl decides to leave but Genshur asks her to wait, and asks if Mao Mao can make an aphrodisiac. And upon hearing this, the girl gets excited, and says that if she has the appropriate ingredients and tools, she is capable of doing something like that, so Genshur heads to his office, and on the way one of the servants calls him to have a drink. Tea with her in her room, but Sigma refuses, 
after all he was full of work to do. And upon arriving in the room, he talks about Genshib having been placed in the palace as a test of the girl's loyalty to the emperor, and Genshir says that even if the emperor doesn't visit the lady, she couldn't take other men to the room, after all it's not enough for a concubine to be beautiful and well-educated, she also needs to be loyal to the emperor. And his servant says that the emperor placing Genshir in the inner palace to test them was a lot of appeal, especially because all the girls drool over him. But he notices that Mao Mao is the only one who doesn't feel desire for him, besides, she looks at him with a contempt he's never seen before, and for some reason he's happy about that. And well, the servant leaves, and Genshir leaves. Remembers about Mao Mao having said that he would receive a visit from the person who sent him the bread, and this already makes him lock the doors, and the next day, Mao Mao leaves the palace, and finds the charlatan doctor and Gao Shan talking, and when he sees with her, he introduces himself again as Master Genshi's assistant, and he takes her to a room with several ingredients that she will use to make the aphrodisiac and upon entering the room the girl is immediately enchanted by everything, and Gao Shan says that she can use any ingredient in that room without restrictions. And then she starts to make the product, but says that she will need something else, and Gao Shan immediately understands what that would be, and goes there to get the cocoa, and Mao Mao praises his sagacity, saying that he is much smarter than his master's shave. Well, when he brings the cocoa, the girl notices that it won't be enough, and Genshir says that they could get more, but Mao Mao explains that that item comes from the southern part of the west, but he says that there must be more cocoa in the warehouse. Goods. And then they get all the necessary ingredients, and upon seeing the girl working, the other servants are curious to know what she is doing, but they are scared away by Hongyang, who tells them to get back to work. And meanwhile, Mao Mao finally starts preparing the aphrodisiac, and she remembers that she already tried the cocoa flavor once, and as expected, she got all high, and Mao Mao believes that this happened because of some malicious customer from the brothel, who was possibly trying to gain the attention of a popular courtesan. However, unfortunately for the guy, he was banned from frequenting the place, and she leaves the aphrodisiac to cool, and uses the leftover cocoa to make a snack for herself, and after that she goes to collect medicinal herbs, and upon returning to the palace, the servants had eaten her lunch, and they were all high. And Genshir says that at least they know that the product works, but Hongyang gets angry and asks Mao Mao for an explanation, and the girl says that it's okay, because the three didn't eat so much, and well, she takes the aphrodisiac to Gyokuyu, and Genshir questions what those other sweets were, and Mao Mao says it's his nighttime snack. Everyone is surprised at this, but the girl explains that he is already used to alcohol and other stimulants, so his body no longer feels the effect, and so he takes the aphrodisiac and threatens to eat it, as they would also have no effect on his body, but soon after he gives it back Coco at the table, and says he was just playing with them. And Mao Mao thinks that that joke is very insolent to do in front of the emperor's concubine, but she remembers that the guy is a flirt, so if the effect of the aphrodisiac hit him, the guy could make fun of anyone who wouldn't come to nothing, after all he would be able to seduce everyone. And well, she gives the aphrodisiac to Genshir, and says that he should eat in moderation, as eating too much could make his nose bleed, so Gyokuyu suggests that Mao Mao make some for the emperor, so that his games don't get so quiet. And the girl explains that that aphrodisiac must be up to three times more powerful than the tonic, and in addition, she advises that they only use the product when they are with the person who will have the relationship, and well, everyone leaves the room, and Gyokuyu comments to his servant that Mao Mao will be very useful, due to his experience in making drugs. Then Genshir tries to follow the girl again, and thanks her for her service, and after that, one of the servants walks through the corridors of the palace, when she suddenly comes face to face with a strange being. Well, Genshir meets with the servants, and offers a reward for them to do something. Fuyo understands the situation and leaves the room in a hurry, and meanwhile, the girl who found the strange being is still there, being watched by the creature. And the next day the servants return to work normally, and comment on having been in the capital for a long time, and express how much they miss their homes, and Aelin says that she received a letter from her father, and says that he seemed to be well happy, as trade between the capitals of the center and east are going well. And Guiyuan explains that this happened because the emperor loved Gyokuyu very much, 
and well, Aelin offers to help Hua with cleaning the kitchen, but the girl says that they should share the work, otherwise they would never finish the chores, until because they don't have servants to help them. Then Aelin remembers when a foreign princess became pregnant, and regrets the fact that she was poisoned while she was pregnant, and well, Gui Yuan says that if they need a lady in waiting, they already have a new one. And speaking of her, Inghua goes to Mao Mao and asks what she is doing, and the girl says that she is preparing medicine for the flu, and this leaves Inghua impressed, as she didn't know that Mao Mao was capable of doing things like that. And she comments that the new lady in waiting is really very talented, well, she goes to Mao Mao, and asks if she doesn't need help with something, so she offers to help her with cleaning the place, and asks if the girl was already aware of the new rumor that is going around the palace, and she says no. And Ing Hua says that there is a ghost in the inner palace, Xiaolan comments that it is a ghost woman in white, and says that everyone has been talking about this mysterious being for a few weeks, the girl also says that reports say that the ghost dances in the air, under the light of the moon, moreover, the ghost appears every night on the walls of the east gate of the castle. And upon hearing this, Mao Mao says that the castle walls surround the entire inner palace, so the only way to enter would be through one of the four gates, being the north, south, east and west gates, but these gates always have guards, and its walls are surrounded by a moat, so it would be impossible for anyone to enter and leave without being seen. And Mao Mao says that the concubines who tried to escape from the inner palace are sunk in the depths of the moats, but she still says that this is just a silly ghost story, but Xiaolan is still afraid of coming face to face with the ghost. And Mao Mao reassures her, saying that it's just a rumor, well, the girl goes to the quack doctor, and asks him to take a look at some medicine, and he smiles kindly, asking her to wait a minute, and when she sees the guy being so kind, she starts to find him strange, after all the guy was so wary of her until a few days ago. However, upon discovering that she knows how to make medicine, the doctor started to treat her better, and also let the girl use his room to make more medicines, in addition, he always gives her the necessary ingredients to make the medicines. Well, the doctor returns with a snack for the girl, then Jenshur appears and asks the doctor to make it for him too, and then he goes to Mao Mao and praises her for her good work again, but the girl says she didn't do anything special, and in her mind she despises him, sending the guy off to find something else to do, and says that as a eunuch, Jenshur should be in her sector. But instead, he stays around the inner palace, as if he were monitoring the functioning of the place, and upon thinking about this, Mao Mao begins to think that he is of a higher level than matron of the servants, and believes that he could be the guardian of the emperor, but then says that he must be very young to take on this role. And then she starts to think about something else, in this case, she imagines that Jenshur must be the emperor's darling, and he notices that she has a mischievous look in her eyes, and asks if she is thinking about something unkind, and the girl says that it is just his impression. Well, he gives something to the doctor, and Mao Mao questions what Jenshur wants with her, and he talks to her about the ghost rumor, and asks if it could be someone with sleepwalking, and then he asks if she would know how to cure that person, and she explains that there is no medicine that cures sleepwalking. He asks if there is a way to cure this without the help of medicine, and Mao Mao says that his specialty is just the pharmaceutical part, and then Jenshur regrets it, and tries to seduce her again, but she doesn't like his clingy attitude at all. Him, and says he will try to fix this sleepwalking issue. And as night falls, Gao Shan takes her to the mysterious being, and on the way she feels that that man doesn't seem to be a eunuch, and well, he calls her Miss Mao Mao, and she says that he doesn't need to treat her with everything. This respect, after all he has a higher hierarchical level than her. Then he asks if he can call her Xiao Mao, but she finds that nickname very childish, well, he changes the subject, and asks the girl to stop looking at her master as if he were a disgusting insect, and he tells her the time Jenshur reported this to him, and said that Mao Mao looked at him as if he were a poisonous caterpillar. And then she says that she will be more careful from now on, and well, they finally get to the woman dancing under the moonlight, and Gao Shan says that that girl is the concubine Fuyo, and explains that she will be handed over to a military officer as a reward next month. And after seeing her, they go to the doctor, and he talks about something that happened two years ago, and says that Fuyo is a shy princess and a skilled dancer, but that she failed in her first dance performance, and after that, 
she locked herself away and isolated herself from everyone and for the doctor her being given as a reward is something very sad in this Mau Mau theorizes that her sleepwalking began due to her shock at being treated as a reward, after all, many illnesses are the result of an unbalanced mind, but even though she has this information, Mau Mau feels that she needs to know more about Fuyo. So she decides to go and check on the girl again and asks where her room is, and the doctor says it's in a building on the north side, so she starts to leave, and the doctor laments Fuyo's situation, and hopes so that she gets better. Furthermore, he explains that the girl is the princess of a small dependent state, and says that it must be difficult for her to have to return, well, the two hide and watch the girl from her bedroom window, and Mao Mao comments that Fuyo has a different expression than when she was dancing on the wall. And Gao Shan says that he was also surprised the first time he saw her like that, after all, in everyday life the girl appears to be a simpler person, and Mao Mao says that she really looks like a crazy rose, a flower that opens at dawn. Its petals are wide and white, but when it starts to get dark, it turns a deeper shade of pink. In other words, the flower changes its appearance throughout the day, and well, after observing it Mao Mao goes to her friend and asks if she knows more about the woman's ghost, and Xiaolan says that the ghost appeared on the side north the first time it was seen. And this leaves Mao Mao thinking, as Fuyo would have moved from the north side to the west side, all on the basis of sleepwalking, in this she remembers what the doctor had told her, and understands the whole situation with the concubine Fuyo, but she remembers that her father taught her not to say anything based on mere speculation. However, she ignores this warning and goes to Gyokuyu to tell her what she deduced, and she explains that sleepwalking is a disease that is not much known about, and it is often said that the cause of it is stress, and Mao Mao tells about a courtesan from the her family's brothel, and says she also had sleepwalking. And the harmonica describes the courtesan as a happy and skilled woman in the art of poetry, and with that she even received an offer to buy it. But this offer ended up being cancelled, as she began to wander around the brothel at night, as if was possessed by a demon. And the next day the woman herself didn't remember what she had done the night before, and Mao Mao says that after the offer was cancelled, the girl's sleepwalking stopped, from which Gyokuya deduces that this courtesan didn't want to be sold, and Mao Mao states that it probably that was it, and he explains that the offer would have come from a rich merchant, who by the way already had a family and even grandchildren. Other than that, there was only one more year left for the girl to finish her contract as a courtier, and upon hearing this, Gyokuya realizes that Fuyo is going through the same situation as the girl reported by Mao Mao, and Genshur questions whether that was really the end of the story, and Mao Mao responds yes, but is already losing patience, so Gao Shan whispers to her to calm down. And well, after that day, concubine Fuyo was forbidden to leave her room, and eunuchs were placed to watch her door until the day of her delivery, and the next day Gyokuyu comments to Hongyang that Mao Mao has been acting strange lately. Then she understands that there must be something behind this story that Mao Mao told her, well, the day set for Fuyo to leave the palace finally arrives, and Gyokuyu comments to Mao Mao that she can tell her the truth if she wants, so the girl he asks the lady to keep it a secret, after all she will tell him something based on speculation. And then the lady promises secrecy, in which Mao Mao says that in addition to the sleepwalking courtesan that she had mentioned, there was another courtesan who had her purchase cancelled for some reason, then she ended up receiving another offer, but her price was cut in half because she got sick. And this Mao Mao explains that it was all a fraud because the two men who were going to buy the two courtesans knew each other, and the woman who fell ill faked her illness, so that they could cancel the first offer. And after that, the real buyer proposed buying it for half the first price, as he didn't have enough money to keep the two together, in addition, one of them still had some time left on her contract. And then Gyokuyu asks if Fuyo would be in the same situation as this courtesan, and Mao Mao says that Fuyo and the soldier who is going to buy her are childhood friends from the same homeland, and the girl says that besides the man she showed her worth in a fight against the barbarians, well, Fuyo emerges leaving the palace. And Mao Mao continues explaining the situation, and says that the man who fought against the barbarians asked Fuyo as his reward, and the boy deduces that he probably already wanted this before he even left his homeland, after all, a soldier like him would never I could ask a princess to marry me. And Mao Mao says that the princess certainly shared the same feeling as her childhood friend, 
and explains that perhaps this is the reason why she failed to perform her dance, as this way she would avoid gaining the emperor's attention, and as a result, she he never touched her, and that kept his body pure. But for Mao Mao, perhaps the emperor will start to see her with different eyes now, after all she will be handed over to another man. In this Gyokuyu understands what made Fuyo pretend to sleepwalk, and in addition Mao Mao says that the fight against the barbarians was in the region eastern, and the night dance she did was at the eastern gate. With this, she deduces that Fuyo was wishing that the soldier would return safely from the battle. But she says that that is just speculation, and well, she leaves walking with her lover, and Gyokuyu wonders if she would be a horrible woman out of envy. There. And as she leaves, Mao Mao remembers that Fuyo was beautiful that day when she was dancing, and in that she answers Gyokuyu's question, and says that she is not bad for feeling jealous of Fuyo, and well, after that, the two come back to the palace, and Mao Mao contemplates the end of the afternoon. And upon seeing that love is capable of making a woman very beautiful, the girl wonders what kind of medicine she would be able to make with this ingredient called love, and meanwhile, a man goes to Gyokuyu's room, and says he has a request to make to the apothecary. And this was another video on the channel, if you liked it and want more videos like this, subscribe and leave a like, see you in the next one.